the Lux Radio Theater brings you Alan Ladd, Dorothy L'Amour, and Chester Morris in Coney Island. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. And step right this way for an hour of mirth and melody and romance. On the inside of this theater, a stupendous attraction. Straight from the bright lights of Hollywood. Not one, not two, but three glittering stars. Well, I'm afraid as a barker, I can't really do justice to my subject. But the simple facts are enough anyway. Because tonight, we bring you Alan Ladd, Dorothy L'Amour, and Chester Morris in the great 20th Century Fox musical hit, Coney Island. For all of you who put in a hard day's work, here's the perfect way to relax. It won't solve a single post-war problem, and it has nothing to do with boundaries or politics. Coney Island is just pure, unadulterated entertainment, with Alan Ladd and Chester Morris involved in a furious feud for the affections of Dorothy L'Amour. And Dorothy singing such catchy tunes of my boyhood as Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey, and Cuddle Up a Little Closer. I remember Coney Island and the days when we traveled down New York Bay by boat to get there or drove down Ocean Parkway in Brooklyn by horse and carriage. Of course, that was some years BLF. That's before Lux Flakes. I, I particularly remember how the Barkers used to boast of the tremendous bargain they were offering with their few minutes of entertainment for 10 or 15 cents. I'm sure any one of them would have fainted immediately at the idea of presenting stars like Alan Ladd, Dorothy L'Amour, and Chester Morris in tonight's play with no admission charge at all. Because your loyalty to Lux makes this modern kind of theater possible. And you ring the bell two ways, with a hit play every Monday night and a hit product, Lux Flakes, at home every day. And now, we ring the bell for tonight's curtain on Coney Island, starring Dorothy L'Amour as Katie... Alan Ladd as Eddie, and Chester Morris as Joe. Today in New York, the closest spot to heaven, probably, is the top of the Empire State Building. But 40 years ago, New Yorkers came closest to paradise at a breeze-swept beach on the Atlantic Ocean. Only a short distance from the hot and throbbing city, they found a land whose milk and honey was clam chowder and steaming weenies, a place of perpetual carnival, of singing waiters and persuasive barkers, a little raucous, a little rowdy, but nevertheless beautiful Coney Island. One spring afternoon, a young man named Eddie Johnson makes his first visit to Coney Island. Eddie has plans for a big business deal involving an old acquaintance, Joe Rocco, owner of the Scenic Gardens Cafe. Well, this is quite a surprise, Eddie. Yeah, a nice place you got here, Joe. A little different from those shooting galleries we used to have, huh, Eddie? Once we had a whole carnival, remember? Uh, vaguely. Yeah, then two years ago in St. Louis, we had an argument about how the carnival should be run. We decided to play a hand of poker for the whole works. <laughs> yes, and I won it with three of the prettiest aces you ever saw. Yeah, I've been trying to find you ever since, Joe. I, I wanted to give you these. I found them the next morning under the cushion of your chair. Four of the prettiest aces you ever saw. Well, Eddie, I, uh, I guess this makes up for all those times I went to the cash drawer and found your hand in it. Now, uh, now why don't we just forget the whole business, huh? Oh, I've tried to forget it, Joe. I've tried and tried. You going to sue me? No, but I figure that since you cheated me out of our carnival, we're really still partners, and that means I own half of this joint. Well, uh, uh, there's just one hitch, Eddie. I, uh, I don't figure the same way. Well, in that case, I'll just have to worm myself in, Joe, one way or another. I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, but I just got to pay you back, Joe. If I didn't, I'd lose all my self-respect. I just wanted to show you my new dress, Joe. How do you... Oh, it's all right, honey. The, the man's just leaving. This is Eddie Johnson, Kate Farley. She's, uh, she's my singer here. Oh, hello, Miss Farley. How do you do? Oh, the dress looks wonderful, Kate. Hey, will you look at the feathers? It'll be a nice dress when it gets through molding. Go on, Eddie. Push off. You, uh, you won't change your mind, huh? No, sorry. All right, suit yourself, Joe. 
Oh, uh, Miss Farley. Yes? When you take that dress off, you better hang it up in the birdcage. Listen, you smart aleck, I've had just With all about... those feathers, you know, it's liable to fly away. Goodbye, Miss Farley. You can't afford to miss it. You just can't afford to miss it. It's only ten cents. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Come in and see her. She's Josephine, the tattoo lady. She's covered with artistic masterpieces. You see Gainsborough's blue boy talking things over with Whistler's mother. You see the leading tower of Pisa. Come in and marvel Frankie. at this. But Frankie, look, to Eddie. Eddie Johnson. Eddie, you old son of a gun. Frankie and Finnegan. Hey, you're looking great. Why not? He's preserved in alcohol. <laughs> Not since the Chicago Fair have I looked upon you. Oh, oh, say this calls for a celebration. Yeah, but tell me, is uh, is this your pitch? Yeah, I'm sorry to say it's mine. All mine. Well, what in the world are you doing at Coney Island? From the looks of business, nothing. Eddie, have you seen Joe yet? Joe Rocco? Yeah, I just came from there. Teaming up with Joe again, are you? No, not just yet, Finnegan. I'm looking for a new partner, Frankie. You interested? Eddie, I ain't got but only nine bucks for my name. Well, listen to me and you'll be rolling in dough. Huh? I've got an idea for a pitch that's worth a fortune. Well, that's great. Go and open it up, but let me alone. But every good location is taken. This would be just a spot for it, Frankie. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The only tattooed woman on Coney Island. Every time she shakes, moving pictures. Now, look, will you listen to me? We can have it ready in two days' time and for less than $300. But I just told you I got exactly I've got nine. the money. All I want from you is its location and your time. Eddie, you just made yourself a deal. After six months with Josephine, even suicide would look good to me. Come on, lads. Let's have a beer and talk it over. Dolly, will you look at that? What? That mob over there in front of Frankie's place. Oh, didn't you know? Frankie's got himself a new show and a new partner. That fellow doing the barking, huh? Oh, so that's Frankie's new partner, is it? Come on, Dolly. We're going over there. Us at a show like that? You bet. Here's my chance to get even. Katie, you just don't make sense. I'll explain later. Come on. And it's only ten cents. Ten cents to see this daring exhibition of genuine Turkish harem girls. Hurry, hurry, hurry. See the young Turkish maiden sold to the southern for 20 pieces of silver. An authentic and educational exhibition with genuine oriental music is played by Abu Mandeb. A Turkish gentleman seated there before you on the Persian carpet. Listen, friends, listen to it. Hey, that's Frankie, ain't it? Playing just like a snake charmer. Of course it is. He looks as much like a Turk as you do. Will you look at him buy those tickets? These guys are making a fortune. Stand back, Dolly. I'm going to go to work. Only eight seats left. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh, Frankie. Hello, Frankie. Yeah. Huh? Oh, hello, honey. Glad to see you. <laughs> I'm amazed, gents. Amazed. Abu arrived in this country only two days ago, and already he speaks a few words of English. <laughs> All right, little lady. Kindly move along now. Kindly move him on. He used to talk to me plenty when we were working together over at the... Ixnay on the Akin Crane. Yes, Abu. Yasmeorum dastam bayuk. You do, huh? It's mesdin taplori pasuk. All right, Abu. I'll ask you. Young lady... Abu here can't figure out why you're wearing that atrocity on your head. He says it can't be a hat or can't. <laughs> Abu says, did lady lose election bet or did lady fall into fruit salad? Kate, we better get out of here. The nerve. The nerve of that bum. Wait till I tell Joe. Just wait. Why, the young lady is going away. Don't rush off, sweetheart. All right, boys. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The show starts in exactly three minutes. It's the most sensational. My hat he didn't like. He insults me in front of everybody. He insults... Hey, we're all the customers. Well, that's what I've been trying to find out. There's something funny going on, Katie. You know, I think I'll just take a look around. Out... Billy, me boy. Finnegan. Ah, come on in and have a drink. Oh, I don't care. Not here in Rocco's place. Finnegan, you're sick. Me? Boy, no, but Steve is Rocco's bartender. The doctor discovered the dear lad had chronic prognosis. And him handling all the glasses the people drinks out of. And I was just going in there. Oh, I've been standing here warning all my friends to keep away. Oh, thanks, Finnegan. Now, if he was looking for something intoxicating, there's Eddie Johnson's new show just up the street. Ah, oh, those turkeys, Carly. That's for me, Finnegan. I'll see you later. My, my, my. So you're the one who's steering my trade away. I'd like to murder you, Finnegan. Wait a minute, Joe. 
it's not his fault. You know who put him up to this, don't you? Well, I got a pretty good idea. Go on, Finnegan, beat him. Joe, you've got to show that four flusher where he gets off. Hey, Louie. Yeah, Joe. Louie, that uh, that old friend of mine, Eddie Johnson, he uh, he needs a lesson. I got some friends in Brooklyn, Joe. They're swell teachers. Yeah. Well, I want that cooch joint of his to look like an earthquake hit it. You understand? Relax, boss. It's as good as done. Oh, oh, Frankie, Frankie. Mm. Oh, hey, can you move? Oh, I'm fine. Just resting. Oh, what hit me? Well, it seems like Joe wants to play a little rough. Hey, take a look around. Oh, what a wreck. Yeah, it's a nice place while it lasts, Frankie. Well, let's start looking for a carpenter. Maybe we can be back in business in three or four days. Maybe. Uh Uh-uh. Why not? Next time, Joe may use dynamite. Oh. Ooh. Hey, Frankie. Frankie, I got an idea. Let's wreck Joe's joint. Dynamite? No. Nice and legal. You see that sign across the street? We'll read it. Welcome to Coney Island, United Brotherhood of Irish Bricklayers, Local 742. Yeah. They'll be here tomorrow, Frankie. The United Brotherhood. So they'll be here. Oh, don't you see? Rockwell's place will be filled with Irishmen. After they've had a few beers, you and I will go in, we'll start making some nasty remarks, and then well, pretty soon they'll be the wildest knockdown. Drink on the house, boys. It's free. Free beer, free lunch. Hey, uh, hey, Louie. Yeah, Joe? I'll be up in the office. See that these boys get treated right. right? Okay, Joe. Say, Louie. Come here a minute. Hey, you guys. Don't you know when it's time to leave town? I don't try to deny it, Louie. The dirty crack you just made about those bricklayers. Oh, ho, so they're a bunch of lilies, are they? Hey, when are you guys trying to pull? Sure, you better take back what you said about the Irish, too. I ain't said nothing about nobody. And who said what about the Irish, lads? This guy here making cracks about us Irish bricklayers. Telling me that one orangeman can lick ten Irishmen? Oh, he did. He, he did, indeed. Oh, dear, dear. Now, get away from me, you. Uh, tough are you, laddie. I'll give you three seconds to take it all back. But I didn't say nothing. Honest, I didn't. And the liar he is, too. Go to sleep, laddie. Sleep well. Oh. Hey, fight, fight, fight. Hey, let's sit down, Frankie. Here in the corner, I want to enjoy this. Oh, look at the way that brick layer threw that chair. Wasn't that beautiful? Yeah, right through Joe's best mirror. Oh, I'm sorry. Joe has to miss this. Where is he? He's upstairs. He... Hey, wait a minute. He's coming down now. He's sure making his scenic gardens all scenic. Get out of my way, Phineas. Now, Joe, I'd like to let you pass, but I can't. You might try to stop the burn. Burn? They're wrecking your place. Get out of the way. Get. Stop it! Police! Help! Police! What? Poor old Finnegan. All right, come on, Frankie. Set him down on my bed. There. Boy, he's cold as a cucumber. Oh, he'll be all right. When Joe pushed him, he hit his head on the bar rail. He'll come around in a minute. Close by. I'm sure nobody saw us. Saw us what? Carrying Finnegan out. Well, what if they did? We couldn't leave him on the floor with the riot going on. Oh, but I got an idea, Frank. A great idea. Another one? Uh, Look, you've done all right for one day. uh, Hey, listen, he's coming around. When Irish eyes are smiling, just like a man. Finnegan, Finnegan, wake up, Finnegan. Keep quiet. I'll do the talking. Uh, uh, Hello, boys. Hello, Finnegan. Uh, Where am I? 
In my bed, Finnegan. You've been here for hours and hours. What's that? What happened? Oh, it's terrible, Finnegan. The doctor's just left. Doctor, is there somebody sick? Yeah. You are, poor fella. Geranium contusions. Yeah, Finnegan, all over your body. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Me poor head hurts, too. Well, the doctors say I have a chance, Finnegan, if, if they get out of town. Ah, oh, but I feel better already. Otherwise, I'll have to take you to the city hospital. I took a drink of water yesterday. I've been poisoned. Oh, now don't worry about money. A few weeks in, say, Atlantic City and you'll be a new man. Frankie and I will take you to the train. Get a carriage, Frankie. Okay. Oh, thank you, lads. Thank you. Atlantic City. Oh, it'll do me a world of good, boys. A change of saloons is just what I need, yes. Boss, boss, look. Eddie Johnson and Frankie, huh? How long have they been here? Nearly an hour, boss. First I've seen of them since they started that fight here two days ago. Hey, Hey, they, uh, they got black ties on. Yeah, I guess they must have been at Finnegan's funeral this morning. Finnegan's funeral? Sure, Joe. He died the day of the fight. What? Oh, a big funeral this morning. And they sent the remains to Atlantic City. Oh. Oh, I think I better talk to Mr. Johnson. Well, here he comes, Eddie. Ah, oh, poor Finnegan. The best friend a man ever had. Sure, and a fine Irishman never lived. Oh, hello, Joe. What was it? His, uh, his heart? His head, Joe. His head. Yeah. Somebody hit him an awful wallop at the bricklayer's party. Well, I see you getting the place all fixed up, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, about Finnegan, Eddie. Uh, I know you saw me push him. Uh, you guys wouldn't be trying a little blackmail, would you? Oh, now, Joe, how can you say a thing like that? I, I told the coroner he hit his head on a curb. Yeah, but if it ever came out that it happened in here, we'd have to tell the truth, Eddie. Well, it wasn't Joe's fault. All they can do is close this place down as a public nuisance. And that's a lot easier than manslaughter. Okay, Eddie. How much do you want? Oh, Joe, you always think the worst of me. All I want is a chance to make some more money for you and... Go on. Talk. All right, let me run this place. Let me put on the shows, give it some real class, and all I want is 50% of any new business I bring in. <laughs> well, it would cost me less to bribe my way out. Oh. Well, the coroner asked me to stop in his office later on. Start work tomorrow, Eddie. Yeah, and have Miss Farley here at 9 o'clock in the morning. Who, Katie? Yeah, I'll be changing the whole joint, Joe. And I'm starting on Katie Farley. In just a moment, Mr. DeMille presents Act Two of Coney Island, starring Dorothy L'Amour, Alan Ladd, and Chester Morris. Now, what's that you're trying to say, Sally? Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. You girls are always wishing for something. What is it this time? I'm wishing that everything nice would last twice as long as it does. I wish my marine furlough was twice as long. I wish my vacation would last twice as long. <laughs> I wish four points worth of butter would last twice as long. Wouldn't it be wonderful? I can't tell you what to do about those things. But there are some nice things you can make last twice as long. Stockings, for instance. Twice the wear for stockings is probably right at the top of every girl's wishing list. It's a wish nightly luxing can help come true. Strain tests prove that stockings washed in Lux flakes lasted twice as long without going into runs as those rubbed with cake soap or washed with a strong soap. Rayon, nylon, silk, cotton all showed similar results. Extra wear from every pair. With Lux Care. And while you're making your stockings last longer, make your Lux Flakes last longer, too. Just use as much as you need to get rich suds, but no more than you need. That helps fight waste. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of Coney Island, starring Alan Ladd as Eddie, Dorothy Lamour as Katie, and Chester Morris as Joe. <laughs> Believing that Finnegan is dead, Joe Rocco has made Eddie manager of his Cine Gardens Cafe. The new impresario spends his first day in hiring an orchestra and revamping the entertainment program. But Eddie is having his trouble. The program consists almost entirely of Miss Katie Farley. And Katie Farley refuses to be revamped. 
It's 8 o'clock. You let everybody else go to dinner. Why can't I? Because I do what I say and you don't. Now, cool off and try the number again. Here, I'll play the piano. What do you want this time? Well, you sing too fast, you sing too loud, and you move around too much. Outside of that, you're great. Everybody sings fast. It's the style. All right, then we'll change the style. All right, I'll do it again. Go ahead, play. Come on, stop shouting. If you want your family in Hoboken to hear you, use a telephone. You fourth-rate Belasco. I gotta sing loud. There'll be a crowd out there tonight. They make a lot of noise. Well, if you're good, they'll stop talking and listen. I've been doing great for a whole year. They like me here. And nobody's gonna change my style of singing. Nobody. I'm leaving now, Mr. Eddie Johnson. I'll be back in time to do my number my way. Goodbye. <laughs> You ready, Katie? The show starts in a couple of minutes. I am ready. Hey, wait a minute. That dress with the feathers, I thought I told you I'm that... wearing what I like, Mr. Johnson, and I just told the orchestra leader to play my number my way. Fast. Good and fast. Well, I hope you don't move around, Katie. With our new scenery, you should stand nice and quiet. In front of a fake tree with a fake moon shining? I'll have to move tonight to dodge the vegetables. Okay. You're the star. You should know. Oh. Well, that's better. Tell them to start playing and ring up the curtain. Oh, uh... Just a minute, Katie. Hey, what do you think you're doing? Oh, I'm just fixing the bottom of your dress. What's wrong with it? Hey, what's that you got? Handcuffs? Get away. Stop it. Stop it. The handcuffs are for your pretty little ankles. I borrowed them from the cop outside. I'm afraid you'll have to stand still now, Katie, or you'll fall flat on your face. Take take those off or so. Help me. I'll... I'll... And these, these go around your wrist, sweetheart. See, like this. There. That's better. And how do I walk out on the stage, smart guy? Oh, I, uh, I carry out, see? It's very simple. I'll show you. I'll just stand there and I won't sing a note. Hey, the handcuffs on your wrist, they show. I gotta cover them up. Oh, here's just a thing. My feathers? You're pulling off my feathers. Well, hold them in your hand. I think it's an ostrich fan. I paid a lot of money for this dress. <laughs> here's another one. You know, I guess I should have dipped you first in boiling water. Mm, you big baboon, you... Oh, you just wait. You'll be sorry. Frankie? Yeah? Tell the leader out there if he wants to keep his job to play slow, nice and slow. Okay. All set, Miss Farley? Chin up now. Sing nice and pretty. Get out of here. Get out! Curtain! We go. What are you doing now? Put me down. Oh, you can't walk with handcuffs on your feet. Take me to the dressing room. Well, what do you think of my way of singing now? That applause wasn't so much. Say, you couldn't have gotten more if you were a parade. Hey, my dressing room. Now, get these things off. In a minute. Katie, they like you tonight. There wasn't a sound while you sang. But once you had real class. Where do 
you get off talking to me like that? There are a lot of people around here who like me just the way I am, see? Sure, but more people will like you if you'll just listen to me. You got warmth, appeal, you're, you're attractive. You know, in fact, you're so attractive, I think I, I gotta kiss you. Get away from me. There. And you'll be still more attractive. Still more attractive if you just dress instead of overdressing. I'm no dummy. I went to school. I finished the 10th grade. I even... Uh-oh. Here's that feeling again. I need another kiss. Is that what you learned in the 10th grade? No. That's why I was kicked out of the 11th. Just wait till I get out of these... these chains. I'll slap your face so hard it'll... No, you won't. Because you know that everything I've told you is right. Okay, I'll take the handcuffs off now. They're off, Katie. And here's my face. Go ahead and slap. Oh. Oh, get out of here. Please get out. Good night, Katie. Good night. Thanks. Come in, Eddie. I, uh, I thought it was about time we did a little bookkeeping. Why, any complaints? Complaints? No. In three weeks, you've turned this place into a gold mine. Why, we've taken in nearly $20,000 with a net of 5000 bucks over average business. You get 50%, Eddie, and here it is. You know, Joe, for 30000 we could buy us a new place. I'm making all I want right here. And why kid ourselves? We're doing great because of Katie. Oh, she's been sensational. That's right. Yeah, but how long did she stay on top? She's not on top. She's just starting. Give her time. She'll be the biggest star in years. She swelled you. Yeah. Oh, uh, incidentally, I'd just as soon as you and Katie keep it on a strictly business basis, Eddie. Oh? Yeah. Yeah, I always had the silly idea that, uh, well, that Katie was my girl. You know what I mean? Oh, sure, Joe. I... Well, we'll see, won't we? Oh, that's right. We'll see. Eddie! Eddie, my boy! Are you there? Who is Eddie! it? Who is it? Finnegan, greetings from Atlantic City. Finnegan. Well, there's something, boys. Are you not glad to see your dear old friend? Uh, hello, Finnegan. What? Hello. Joe, you look like you're seeing a ghost. That's just what I am seeing. Or uh, am I, Eddie? What is this? Everybody stares at me so queer-like. Why, two of the boys downstairs signed the pledge as soon as I walked in the door. Uh, Finnegan, uh, I'll see you later, huh? Later. Oh, oh, you're busy. Sure, Eddie. Oh, it was a lovely time. I had a lovely, lovely time. Well? Joe, I told you I'd worm in here, one way or another. <laughs> well, you slipped over a fast one and tripled my business. You know I like being taken that way. Joe, what about a new place? Oh, it can wait. You better come in on it with me, Joe. If you don't, I'll buy it myself, Katie and me. And we'll take all your business away. Well, I wouldn't like that, Eddie. I wouldn't like that at all. Good morning, sir. May I help you? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm Joe Rocco. I have an appointment with Mr. Hammerstein. Oh, yes, sir. Go right in. Oh, thanks. I'm Rocco, Mr. Hammerstein. Well, sit down, young man. Thanks. I've just been reading the press notices about Miss Farley. I have to admit, these hard-boiled critics seem to back up everything you say. Oh, she's really wonderful, Mr. Hammerstein. Well, society doesn't flock to Coney Island for nothing. How long has this been going on? Well, she, she started to click about three months ago. I can't understand why you come to me, Rocco. If I thought she'd be good for my new show, I'd try to steal her from you. <laughs> well, Katie belongs here. Here on Broadway. She's too good for Coney Island. Well, I'll certainly drop out to hear her sing. Oh, fine. And uh, when can you make it? Well, I can't say exactly. Uh, next week, probably. Well, thanks a lot, Mr. Hammerstein. Oh, not at all. I'll telephone you before I come. Goodbye, Rocco. And now a new number, ladies and gentlemen. Miss Kate Farley singing, Put Your Arms Around Me, Honey. Put your arms around me, honey 
Hold me tight, cuddle up and cuddle up with all your might. Oh, babe, don't you roll your mind. I that I just idolize. When they look at me, my heart begins to flow. Then it starts to rockin' like a motorboat. Oh, oh, I never knew any girl like you. Oh, honey, you were never better. Thanks, Eddie. You've got it at last, that, that trick of making every guy feel you're singing just for him. It's easy when it's not a trick, Eddie. Huh? Oh, Kitty, you mean that? You mean all those pear-shaped tones were just for me, huh? Couldn't you tell? Oh, honey. Come on now, hurry up and change. I got things to talk about. I won't be long. Wait for me. Hey, Eddie. Oh, Joe. Say, she did great, didn't she? Now, look, Eddie. Turn me out of my dough if you want to, and if you can. I can laugh about that. But when it comes to Katie, I lose my sense of humor. I wouldn't do that, Joe. You may need it. Well, I just want you to know I'm going to do everything I can to break it up between you two. Now, I'll tell you something. I'm going to be leaving here in a few weeks. I'm getting that new place. But you can still have half if you want. Oh, I'm doing fine right here. I won't ask you again, Joe. Oh, come on, get smart. You haven't got that kind of dough. That's why I went to the Brooklyn Savings Bank. They said if I have Kate Farley, they'll loan me $20,000. Oh. Well, uh, well, what makes you think Katie will go with you? Love is a wonderful thing, Joe. A wonderful thing is love. Joe. I don't know. He said something about a poker game at the Continental. What are you all excited about? Downstairs, Hammerstein. William Hammerstein's downstairs. What about... Who? Oh, Hammerstein? Yeah, the producer. He says Joe asked him to come and hear Katie. Funny Joe didn't say so. Well, uh, Hammerstein told Joe he'd be down next week, but he just happened to be at Brighton tonight, so he came on over. Hey, I'll go and tell Katie. You stay put. Huh? Don't you see what Joe's trying to do? I want to open up that new cafe. If Katie comes with me, I get a big loan from the bank. But if Katie goes to Hammerstein, I'm licked. Yeah, but what do we do now? Well, if Joe can play poker, I guess it's okay if Katie and I take the evening off, too. But I... she's got a number coming up. Dolly knows all her songs. Dolly will sing. That's what understudies are for. Besides, I wouldn't want to disappoint Mr. Hammerstein. Oh, Dolly is a comic. She'll sound awful. Yeah, I hope so. But Hammerstein will think she's Katie. Oh. You know that uh, sign with Katie's name on it? Yeah, you mean the great big one on the side of the stage? Yeah. See that it stays there when Dolly sings. I'll talk to Hammerstein now. Go get Katie and tell her to meet me at the side end. Okay, Eddie, I hope you know what you're doing. Oh, gee, it's wonderful here, Eddie. Yeah. Beach fires in the sand, stars in the sky, moon on the water. I could sit here all night. Except I, I feel awful guilty running out like this. Oh, forget it. You'll only miss one number. Besides, it's a small break for Dolly. Listen. A moonlight picnic on the beach. <laughs> Lucky people. We'll do that, too. Someday after I get my own place. You sure have big plans, Eddie. Why not? And you know who's going to sing for me? Who? Katie Farley. Really? Oh, I've got to have you, Katie. I want everything to be the best. That's the nicest compliment you ever paid me. You know, if you're not careful, you're going to wind up owning Coney Island. I intend to. What a guy. And what a sap. Sap? Me? No, me. I've fallen for you, Eddie. I've fallen awful hard. Katie, you'll never be sorry, honey. Never. Oh, when they look at me, my heart begins to fold. Oh, then it starts a rockin' like a motorboat. Oh. There's two more songs later on, Mr. Hammerstein. Well, uh, that's fine, uh, but I think I've heard enough. Uh, tell Mr. Rocco I was uh, greatly impressed. Well, thanks, Mr. Hammerstein. Goodbye. Uh, Mr. Hammerstein. Hello, Rocco. Why, I understood you were out. Well, I, I was, but one of my boys telephoned me you were here. I, I came right back. Uh, Mr. Johnson took very good care of me. Oh, yeah. fine. Well, what did you think of Miss Farley? 
Well, as you told me, she's very uh, unusual. I'll think it over and let you know. Good night. Well, good night, Mr. Hammerstein. Uh, uh, Frankie, tell Katie to come here. Uh, well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll go look for her, Joe. What do you mean, you'll go look for her? Where is she? Well, you see, Joe, it's like this. Uh, just before... Say, Joe, I had a wonderful story tonight. It seems to a two... Well, what goes on around I... here? Well, there's Katie now, coming in the front entrance with Eddie. Where have they been? Well, uh, just as I was saying, Joe, it Get seems out of to here. a... Get out of here. Katie! Hello, Joe. Can I talk to you a minute, Katie? Sure. You're not sore, are you, Joe? Sore? Well, what about... Well, what about? Well, Eddie and I went for a little walk. I I skipped my last number. Dolly did it for me. Oh. Oh, well, no wonder I couldn't figure it out. Uh, figure what out, Joe? Well, I I think you can guess. But I'd better tell Katie. What are you talking about? Katie, William Hammerstein was here a little while ago. He came just to hear you sing. Oh, no. Yes, I invited him. He's looking for a singer. But why didn't you tell me? Well, I expected him next week. But Eddie knew he was here. Oh, but how did I know it was Hammerstein? I never saw the guy before in my life. <laughs> you know, that's very funny. He told me Mr. Johnson had taken very good care of him. And you know, Katie, when he heard Dolly sing, he thought it was you. Well, how could he get that idea? Look up on the stage. Somebody didn't bother to change the sign. I see. Looks like Mr. Johnson took care of a lot of things. Oh, now, wait a minute, Katie. I... Why didn't you tell me? Shall, uh, shall I tell her, Eddie, or will you? All right, go ahead and tell her. Well, it's so simple, Katie. You see, if Hammerstein heard you and signed you for his show, then Eddie wouldn't have you for his new cafe. And, uh, and without Eddie, without you, there isn't going to be any new cafe. Oh, wait a minute. That's not true. Now, look, Katie, it's... Eddie, before it's... you quit, I just want you to know you're fired. And, uh, thanks, Eddie. There's a... Thanks a lot for taking me out tonight. I'll... I'll never forget it. <laughs> We pause now for station identification. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mr. DeMille returns with Dorothy L'Amour, Alan Ladd, and Chester Morris for the third act of Coney Island after a brief intermission. Now, here's our friend Libby Collins with some inside information. You might call it undercover news, Mr. Kennedy, because it's about undies. Did you know they're using balloon cloth for lingerie now? Balloon cloth? You mean like those big barrage balloons you see in the pictures? Exactly. The government has released a limited quantity of it for civilian needs, and it's cropping up in dresses and blouses but mostly in under things. I've seen some simply darling long sleeve grandmother nighties made of it. It's surprisingly fine, like lawn or batik. Nice enough even for a bride's trousseau. Today's cottons are so attractive, they deserve a place right alongside your pretty rayon undies. And the same safe care. Gentle Lux Flakes. Yes, Gentle Lux Care for all your undies will keep them new looking longer. Actual washing tests on rayon slips and nighties prove that Lux Care keeps colors lovely three times longer. Strong soaps, hot water, and rough handling. Faded colors over 50% in only 30 washings. Pulled out seams and frayed shoulder straps, too. But Lux undies stayed lovely. No matter whether your undies are cotton, rayon, or precious silk, they'll stay lovely longer with gentle Lux flakes. To say it with music, undies lead a long life. When they lead a Lux life. <laughs> Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We'll have some news on the private lives of our stars after the play. And now the curtain rises on the third act of Coney Island, starring Dorothy L'Amour, Alan Ladd, and Chester Morris. <laughs> Katie missed one opportunity to sing for William Hammerstein... But Joe Rocco quickly arranged another audition. He's taken Katie to New York and sits with the producer in Hammerstein's theater. On the empty stage, Katie is finishing her number. Oh, I can make you 
Mr. Hammerstein? Oh, well, she's all right. <laughs> it's no use. Your, your smile gave you away. <laughs> well, I, I thought if I acted hard-boiled, I might get her for less money. <laughs> I can do another chorus if you'd like. Katie, you were great. Wonderful. Mr. Rocker and I are just going into my office to talk about a deal. Oh, wait there, Katie. I'll be back in just a few minutes. I'll wait. Oh, I want to thank you. You played the song exactly like... Eddie. Hello, Katie. What are you doing down there in the orchestra pit? Playing for you? I told Hammerstein's pianist you were expecting me. That and five bucks seemed to convince him. Katie, give me just one more minute. There are a lot of things I want to explain. I listened to you once before. Of all the selfish, conniving... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Remember me? I'm the guy who just played the piano for you. If I'd wanted to, I could have crabbed your act awful easy. I didn't, though, because... Well, I want you to get that job. I'm sorry about the other time, Katie. Honestly, I and that makes everything all right, I suppose. No, but it should make you take that cotton out of your ears long enough for me to tell you why I did it. I know why. You want that new place. I'm sure I do. But that wasn't the real reason. I didn't want you to work for Hammerstein because... Well, because it would put too much distance between us. Eddie, it's exactly 11 miles from here to Coney Island. I'm not talking about that kind of distance. Once you hit Broadway, you'd be a million miles from me. It's happened so many times before, Katie, and I... Well, I just didn't want to lose you. You see, I... I happen to love you. That's why I did it. Well, I guess that's all I have to say. Eddie. Oh, Eddie, get me out of here quickly. Yeah, but... What about Hammerstein, Broadway? I'm from Coney Island, Eddie. And right now, I feel an awful long way from home. <laughs> Where have you been, Katie? What happened to you? Six hours ago, I left you on a stage in New York. I'm sorry, Joe, but Eddie came along and I... And I figured it would be better if Katie wasn't around while you and Hammerstein were talking business. Hammerstein wanted you to sign a contract. So did Eddie. Look, Joe. Oh. Oh, a marriage license. Yeah, that's right. It looks just like a liquor license. <laughs> Except it's got little cupids running all over it. Well, congratulations. Um, when's the wedding? Tomorrow afternoon, Joe, and I, I'd like you to be the best man. Well, thanks. That's, that's swell. Um, what'll I tell Hammerstein? Oh, we just spoke to him on the telephone. He's not starting rehearsals till August. He said we'll have plenty of time for the honeymoon. Oh, you mean you, you still want to sign with Hammerstein? You bet. Surprised, Joe? Well, frankly, yes. I, I thought you wanted Katie for your new cafe. Yeah, I did. But I want her more as my wife. Well, Joe, we'll see you at the church. Yeah, the little one right across from Brighton Park. Tomorrow afternoon, 4.30, eh? Huh? I'll be there. You see, Joe, it all worked out just beautifully. Yeah. Beautifully. Hey, Louie. Yeah? You, uh, you remember Sylvester Keene? That broken-down actor? Sure. He blew in last week. He was looking for a job. Well, get hold of him. Tell him he's got a job. Dolly, it's 4.30. Where could he be? Joe, you said Louis bring an Eddie in an automobile. He probably got a flat tire. I'm going out and look for him. You stay right here in this room. It's bad luck to go inside before the wedding march. I ought to know. Been married four times. Then you find him. Okay, I'll find him. Oh, excuse me. I was about to knock. Miss Farley? No, that's Miss Farley in there. Who is it? I'm Sylvester Keene from the Brooklyn Savings Bank. Don't tell me I've overdrawn my account. <laughs> Oh, no, no. I wanted to speak to Mr. Johnson, but I understand he isn't here yet. I thought perhaps you could give him a message. Why, certainly. Just tell Mr. Johnson we've decided to loan him $20,000 for his new cafe. Why, that's wonderful. But if anyone can make a success out of a cafe, it's Mr. Johnson. Well, frankly, Miss Farley, we consider your reputation a little better security than his. An attraction like you would make any cafe a success. Oh, thanks. But uh, I won't be singing in his cafe. I'm going to work for William Hammerstein. You are? Why, why, yes. Why, that's strange. 
Mr. Johnson called us just a little while ago and said that now that you and he are going to be married, you had changed your mind. You are staying in Coney Island. He told you that? Dear, dear, that changes everything. Well, I'm certainly glad we had this little talk, Miss Farley. Yes, so am I. I'm sorry if I said anything that... Katie, Eddie's here. They got stuck in traffic. Well, goodbye, Miss Farley. Goodbye. Katie, here are your railroad tickets. Two days in Niagara Falls and then down through Canada and Detroit. Excuse me a minute. Eddie, I'll get him for you, honey. Please. And, uh, Joe, do you mind? No. Well, you want to be alone with him, huh? Well, I'll, I'll just tell the preacher he's here. How are you, Mrs. Johnson? Here. Posies for the train. Close the door, Eddie. Huh? Oh, sure. Eddie, a man was here just now from the bank. He was? Well, what do you want? Did you tell them that I was going to be singing for you? Well, last week I said I might be able to get you, but that was before Hammerstein said you that... You spoke to them again today. Today. You told him you had me all sewed up. Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't know who was here, what he said, but... Don't lie, Eddie. You know you couldn't get the money without me. What was your plan this time, to convince me on our honeymoon? Oh, Katie. Katie, you don't honestly think that. What do you want me to think? That I'm marrying you because I love you and for no other reason. Isn't there anything you'd, you'd like to explain? Well, no, I'm not even going to try. Katie, you've got to believe me because... Down deep, you just know I'm on the level. Unless you do, our marriage wouldn't be worth a hoot. Is that all, Eddie? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Someday you'll find out I'm telling the truth, except then it may be too late. If you leave me now, well, well, I guess it's all over. You know that, don't you? Yes, I know that. Well, what are you going to do? What I have to do? I'm leaving now. Intermission, ten minutes, ten minutes, intermission. Smoking in the outer lobby, please. Smoking in the outer lobby. Oh, the girls, wonderful wherever, did they fall? Somewhere in Coney Island, I think. Keith and Farley. Hammerstein found himself another star. Farley, girls, the whole show, I could see her every night. Well, Eddie, looks like she's in. Yeah, she's got them standing on their ears, Frankie. Well, I swore I wouldn't do this, but I got her. Do what? Go on backstage, Frankie. I'll see you later. It's about time. Good luck, Eddie. I don't know, though. I mean, I think it's trouble. You should hear what they're saying, Katie. Oh, it's sensational. <laughs> and wait till they hear the third act. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. But I'll believe it when I read it in the morning papers. Oh, oh uh, by the way, I, uh, I saw Eddie in the lobby, Katie. If you want, I'll ask him to drop in later. In case he has the same idea, tell him to save himself the trouble. Do you really mean that? What do you think? Well, I think it's about time I gave you this. Joe, it's beautiful. And I didn't win it in a card game, either. It's one ring I bought in a jewelry store. Hey, <laughs> that's uh, that's the wrong hand. It, it, it's, it's a left-handed ring. Oh. Oh, no go, huh? Joe, I... Oh, forget it, Katie, but keep the ring. You know, just because a hay burner runs second, he doesn't ask for his entry fee back. I'm so sorry, Joe. Oh, Katie, listen. Since I did run out of the money, there's something you ought to know. That day in the church, when you were going to be married, I... Come in. Hello, Katie. Joe? Hello, Eddie. I just wanted to tell you how swell it's going. You're even better than I thought you'd be. Well, thanks, Eddie. How have you been? Oh, fine, fine. I'm opening the cafe next month. Will you drop out? Sure. Where's it going to be? Well, I'm in the same building I always had in mind. I thought you took an option on that building, Joe. <laughs> I did. You know, Eddie, I hate to tell you this, but the reason I let the option expire was because the fire commission had tipped me off. <laughs> They're going to condemn the building. Well, I hate to tell you this, Joe, but that guy wasn't the fire commissioner. <laughs> oh, I see. Uh, just a friend of yours, huh? Uh-huh. The way you two double-cross each other and smile about it beats me. <laughs> Yeah, we've sure pulled some beauties. Yeah. Remember the time you got me that date with a blonde and she turned out to be the sheriff's wife? <laughs> well, that was nothing. What about the time I was running that freak show in Toledo? You painted the mayor's face on the sword swallower's back and I got 30 days for it. <laughs> <laughs> and in Memphis, Joe pays me off in counterfeit bills. Katie and I get tight and try to cash one of them at the police station. <laughs> and... What about that day at the church when you sent that guy over who was supposed to be from the bank, Sylvester Keene? 
You know, that one really is <laughs> a jackpot. <laughs> Joe, I'll never forget it, Eddie. You should have seen his makeup. It was perfect. <laughs> I'll bet it was, Joe. And when Louie told me how he stalled you off by getting caught in the traffic, I thought I... Well, Miss Farley, now you know. Joe, was that the something you wanted to tell me? Yeah. Yeah, he still loves you, Katie. Don't let him get away from you again. That's so easy to say. Curtain going up, Miss Polly. Things will work out. You'll see. Good luck. <laughs> Hot dogs, here they are. Ginger wine, Coney Island. Hot dogs. Get the red hot Eddie, what in the world are you doing out here? Hello, Katie. Well, I could ask the same question. At 9 o'clock at night, you should be tending to business. By the way, how is the new place? Oh, fine. I'd like you to see it. Maybe later, Eddie. You see, I got a telegram from Joe. He said to meet him on the Coney Island Pier at 9 o'clock Sunday night. Well, here I am. Uh, That's funny. I I got a telegram, too. Joe? No, from the city hall. Something about my license not being legal after tomorrow. Said a man would be here to see me about it at 9 o'clock. It sounds awful phony to me. Some amateur is trying to pull a fast one. Yeah, uh, sure, I just opened, opened it up. It, the license is good for a whole year. Listen. Somebody's having a good time. Yeah. Moonlight picnic on the beach, remember? We were going to do that one day. Katie, do you think that... Hot dogs, Coney Island caviar. Oh, hello, Eddie, hot dog. Sure, why not? Katie? I'll take a bite of yours. With mustard, Mac. That's it. Thanks. Thanks, Eddie. Hot dog, get your phone. Open your mouth. Mmm. Delicious. You got mustard all over. I'll lick it off. Mmm. Good. I, uh, I know a better way to take mustard off. You do? Uh Uh-huh. This way. Wonderful way, Eddie. Hey, look, uh, how long do I have to stand here watching this? Joe. Oh, uh, hello, Joe. Hello, Eddie. Now, uh, about that license. Oh, uh, so you sent the telegram. I might have known. Sure, it expires tomorrow. Your, uh, your marriage license. Oh, well, thanks for reminding me. No, that license cost Eddie a dollar, Katie. Be ashamed to see that buck wasted. And now, in case you two are interested, there's a preacher waiting in my office. The service always was pretty good at your cafe, Joe. Well, Miss Farley, uh, can you spare the time to get married? Uh, how long does a marriage take? This one? Uh, about 50 years, I hope. I think I can just about make it. Well, what are you waiting for? Oh, Eddie, just a minute. Uh-oh, now what? Mustard all over your face. <laughs> In just a moment, our stars will return for a curtain call. Did you ever try to describe something in music? Let's take Dishpan Hands, a really bad case. They're red and rough and scratchy. Every time you finish with that strong soap, they sting and get angry red in protest. You're as self-conscious as if you had lead weights at the end of your arms. Maybe this music describes them. Now, there's another kind of hands, left hands. You don't know they do dishes. Because they're soft and smooth and lovely. The kind of hands you're proud of. The kind of hands other women envy. The kind that makes you seem feminine and helpless. Here's the kind of music they suggest. Yes, that means Lux hands, soft and white. Of course, they wash dishes, but they don't show it. So if you would like softer, smoother hands, simply change from strong soap to Lux flakes for dishes. No creams, no lotions, no special babying. Simply change from strong soap to Lux. Then you change dishpan hands to Lux hands. And listen, it costs less than a penny a day. That's because Lux goes further. These gentle, rich flakes wash up to twice as many dishes, ounce for ounce, as any of ten other leading soaps tested. So if your dealer is out of Lux, try again soon. More is on the way. Lux is so thrifty, it's worth waiting for. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our star. The spirit of Coney Island has always been entertainment, and tonight's play was in that pleasant tradition.
Thanks to Alan Ladd, Dorothy Lamore, and Chester Morris. Thanks, C.B. Pleasure to be back. Are you getting on along with your painting, Alan? Oh, fine. Just a few finishing touches now. I didn't know you were an artist. Alan, uh, Alan, what are you painting? Landscapes, portraits, or still life? I'm painting my house. <laughs> <laughs> You're almost as domestic as I am. I've been keeping house for the last few weeks, cleaning, washing dishes. In a sarong? No, this was a vacation. I did the cooking, too. In a sarong? No, this was a vacation. But, well, Dottie, how'd you get that tan, then? Oh, I did a little swimming, too. In a sarong? No, this was a vacation. Shall we go round again? <laughs> you know, I just celebrated my first wedding anniversary. Well, my daughter is celebrating her first anniversary next Friday. Why, Alan? <laughs> fine. I, I didn't know she was... Uh... Yes, sir, she'll be a year old Friday. Uh-huh. Well, that's a wonderful age. I, I remember when Chester Morris was a year old. Yeah. We all thought he was a very pretty baby. <laughs> yes, uh, 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 C.B., what's the play next week? <laughs> well, Chester, it's the RKO screen drama, This Land is Mine. And our stars will be Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Sullivan. This Land is Mine is a story of heroism among the ordinary people of Europe, of the young and old who cling to the banner of freedom with their lives at stake, and wait in the darkness for that one great day to come. The day of liberation. It was a fine picture, C.B. I'll be listening. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> See you all on the island sometime. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents... Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Sullivan in This Land is Mine. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Ladies and gentlemen, the surest and safest way to write to men and women in the armed service overseas is by V mail. And besides these advantages to you, it saves precious cargo space for fighting equipment. When V-Mail is used, one transport plane will do the work of 50 similar planes carrying regular airmail letters. Remember that the War and Navy departments give priority to V-Mail over all other types of personal mail. So if you haven't been using it, start now. Get the V-Mail forms at any stationary counter. Alan Ladd appeared through the courtesy of Paramount Pictures, producers of The Uninvited. Dorothy Lamore will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, and the angels sing. Chester Morris will soon be seen in the Columbia picture by Secret Command. This program was broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. Tonight, when you tuned in to the Lux Radio Theater, you knew they would, you would get good entertainment. Try tuning in to this same station tomorrow night and Wednesday at the same time. Tomorrow night, you will hear George Burns and Gracie Allen with their guest star, Barbara Stanwyck. Wednesday night, Frank Sinatra sings A Lovely Way to Spend an Evening. Major Bose will be Frank's guest. Make this station at Lux Time a habit, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, for the best in drama, comedy, and music. This is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Sullivan in This Land is Mine. Mighty high, no points for spry. It's true, ladies, now you don't have to spend even one red ration point for spry. The new easy mix shortening that gives lighter, better tasting cakes that stay fresh longer. Get point free spry tomorrow. Use it for all your baking and frying. Remember, no points for spry shortening. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting.